Hi, welcome to my story time today. So I filmed it uh, roughly an hour ago and just sat down to edit and realized that my mic was off for the first like minute of the video, which was like my whole intro. And I then turned the mic on when I realized it was off and then forgot that I wouldn't have audio for that intro. Like I just, I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, so I'm filming it now. So I honestly can't believe I haven't told this story on my channel yet because it's, it's a good one and it's really funny and just highlights how much of an idiot I was when I was in high school and how naive and like innocent I was. <laughs> um, but yeah, I started watching a bunch of like how I got cheated on and found out stories on YouTube. And um, I thought, I can do that. Without further ado, this is the story of how I got cheated on when I was a sophomore in high school. I hope you guys enjoy it. I just realized that my mic wasn't on for the first minute of this video. We're going to just get right into this story. This took place my sophomore year of high school and I had just turned 16. I was literally 16 for like a month before this story kind of started to unfold. I have notes, I have notes because this happened a long time ago and I honestly had to sit down and kind of piece it together in my mind um, because of how long ago it happened. So let me just let me just pull this up for a moment. And now I'm realizing that the notes might actually be on my computer, so that's really, really, really convenient. Yep, yep, they're on my Mac. Why would I not have put them? <sighs> Please stand by. I'm going to go and attempt to um, get those notes right now. Okay, we're back. Also, if you're wondering why I'm filming in this room right now, it's because I'm hiding from my cats. All right, so I um, texted myself these notes from my computer, so now we have them and we're good. And there's a lot of them. So I'm gonna just start right off. Um, this was spring 2010, so eight years ago. It's a long time. Wow, that's a long time. I, like I said, had just turned 16 years old and I was going through my first heartbreak breakup with my ex. We're gonna refer to him as my ex in this story. He will come up again. So if you hear me talk about my ex, this is the boy that I had gone through a breakup with in like the fall of my sophomore year and I was still pining over him in the spring of my sophomore year. I was very heartbroken, I was very, very single <laughs> and just wanted nothing to do with anybody else except for him and I was like obsessed with him. I don't know if he watches my YouTube channel. He might be watching this, I don't think you watch my content but if you do, hello! Welcome! One day my friend Jackie, we're using her real name because she's amazing and has no kind of bad part in this story. She came to me and said, hey, I'm managing the boys varsity lacrosse team this spring and I'm wondering if you wanted to do that with me. Now, I don't know if this is a thing at other schools, but at my high school, most sports teams would have a manager or two that would kind of like go to all the games, carry equipment, keep track of the book, which was like for lacrosse, it was like, you know, um, who scored, who had an assist, you know, who had a ground ball, you know, all that stuff. That was the job. So, um, so they needed two people for boys varsity lacrosse and Jackie was one of them and I was asked to be the second. So I agreed to it just because if we're being completely honest, um, my ex had like two friends on the team and I thought, hmm, maybe I could just get really close with them and then my ex will want me back. That's so embarrassing. Moving on. Okay, so I agree to be the manager and I show up to the first practice. The coach comes up to Jackie and I in the gym while the boys are warming up and he was like giving us kind of like a rundown of everything and like what we were expected to do. And then he was like, oh, and by the way, you guys really need to watch out for Jeff. We're gonna use Jeff as the name for this person in this story. Jeff's good, Jeff's easy to say. So he said, you guys really need to watch out for Jeff 
because he's probably going to try and pursue one of you at some point this season. And I'm not making this up. Like, we actually had a warning ahead of time about Jeff. Now, Jeff was the senior captain, one of them. There was three senior captains. Jeff was one of them. And Jeff, everybody knew who he was. He had a reputation in high school. Like, we're not going to lie about it. He was a boy. He didn't really like exclusively date people. It wasn't like that. So um, he had a reputation under his belt. And uh, we're just going to we're just going to move on from what I just said. Yeah. So Jeff was Jeff had been around. And um, so we were exclusively warned by the coach that he might might come for us. So I laughed it off. I thought like the coach was kidding. I thought he was exaggerating. Not even, I don't even think we'd gone through the first practice. Jeff was already talking to Jackie and I. We were sitting in the corner eating goldfish and he kept coming over and taking our goldfish um, like on their water breaks and stuff. We were really annoyed like with that, like it was like joking around, but we were like, yo, like we have this little bag of goldfish for us, like leave us alone. Um, we were basically just at practice, we would do like homework and just eat snacks. It was great. So um, that's what we were doing. And he kept coming over and stealing our goldfish. So the next day, he showed up to practice with this big box of goldfish, like one of those jumbo boxes. And he was like, Hey, like, I feel really bad for taking your goldfish yesterday. I bought you guys this huge box. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's actually super nice of him. Like, that's really, really nice of him. A few practices go by and he starts to make it a little bit more obvious that he's interested in me. Um, just because like he would come up to me at practice and talk to just me like Jackie would be off doing something else and he would kind of find times when it was just me by myself. I started to notice that and like wasn't really that concerned about it. I was just like whatever like he's really friendly. He's really nice. Like what am I going to complain about? He's not harassing me or anything like he was not being creepy. So and after a little while of this he decides to ask me out on a date. So he asked me out on a date to go get ice cream. At first I thought like, okay, like we're gonna go get ice cream and then he's gonna try and get me to like come over to his house or something. But it wasn't like that. He picked me up, he took me to ice cream. He asked me like every question under the sun about myself. He asked me about my like relationship status. He was like, you know, like how many boyfriends have you had? You know, like. Do you like anybody right now? You know, stuff like that. And after that date, we started to kind of like hang out a lot more. And I have to admit, I, I liked him. Like I did have an attraction to this guy and I really like thought that we were pretty compatible. I thought like our relationship was going pretty good for what it was. It wasn't really like dating, but we were hanging out. And, like, I was like, I like this. He would bring me home after practice all the time because I didn't have a car or a license. Um, <laughs> again, I was just, just 16. So he would bring me home all the time and we would just like sit in my driveway in his car and we would talk. And so that went on for a little while. Like that was just like became the norm. Like he would drive me home. He would pick me up if we had a late practice. He'd like pick me up in my house and bring me to practice. Um, he was very like accommodating, just super nice. Um, at games, he would come over and talk to us like at halftime and stuff. So after a little while of this, he brought me home one day in, in his car. He asked me to go to prom with him, which I was like, what? Because he had like a lot of friends that were girls. He had a lot of people in his class that he talked to on the reg and like I just figured he would bring one of them to prom uh because he wasn't dating anyone obviously but like I just thought that he would have brought someone from his own grade to prom I was very caught off guard and so he asked me to prom and I mean like in my mind I was like trying to act like the reason behind this wasn't that he just wanted to like deflower the sophomore girl on his prom night I said it. That's kind of, I think, what he was looking to do. But anyway, I was trying to tell myself that's not what he was looking to do. And I said yes. And in the back of my mind, I knew that, like, that was not something that I was ready to do with just anyone. Like, I had never done that before. And we were not dating. Like, he was not my boyfriend. He was 
considerably older than me. I wanted that to be with someone special and like something that I was like really ready for and I knew that I wasn't gonna be ready for that. That's not my intent, like to go to prom with him is just to go to prom. From there, the relationship became extremely hot and heavy, as you can probably imagine. He would take me to parties also, like we would go out on the weekends, we'd go to like pit parties and house parties and my mom had no clue where I was and I just kind of became a little bit of a wild child without people realizing Realizing. I was very rebellious all of a sudden. I had this like weird crazy Time where I just like was up for anything like he'd be like, let's go do this And I'd be like, okay, like I had no fear and if you'd known me in high school I was a goody two-shoes to the max like did all my homework went home went to bed. I was very like straight laced very very straight laced. I didn't drink I still didn't drink when I was with him, but I didn't go to parties, like that was not my thing. So this was really out of character for me. And a few of my friends noticed this and were like, you know, we're a little concerned. And I was like, it's fine. You know, like I'm cool, I'm controlling myself. So after a little while of this, you know, we're together and this is where the weird stuff starts to happen. This is where I start to realize that something is up. Probably a month before prom, I would say we'd been together for like a few weeks and um, we're at practice one day and Jackie and I are sitting there and Jeff had given me his phone to listen to music. I did not have an iPhone. It was not in that that fam yet. Not until college actually. <laughs> so he had given me his phone to listen to music and I see he gets a text message from this girl. And we're gonna call her Sabrina. Um, I had never seen the name before. We didn't go to school with this person. And she just texts him and says, hey. And so I see this come through and Jackie sees this come through and we both kind of look at each other and I'm like, what do you think this is about? Like, who do you think that is? And she's like, I don't recognize the name. Like, I don't think we go to school with that person. You know, maybe you should ask him about it. And I was still kind of like not in girlfriend mode with him. Like, I was like, whoa, like, I don't want to seem like a crazy psycho. Like, we're not officially dating. I don't want to make it out like, you know, I care like if he's talking to girls. Like, he has friends that are girls. Like, I don't want to scare him away and make him think that, you know, he can't talk to girls. Like, I didn't want to be that crazy psycho girl. And I wasn't his girlfriend. So I was like, I don't think it's serious enough for me to be like, you know, who are you talking to? So I was like, no, I'm not really going to say anything. And um, that same practice afterward, he comes up to me and he's like, Hey, like, I need to talk to you about something after practice. My heart just like stops. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like it has to do with this girl. Maybe he likes her. Maybe he wants to take her to prom instead. Like this was like before my stalking days where I would go and like find out who this person was right then and there. Um, I just like assumed that she went to another school or something. Um, and something just was off about the whole thing. So he brings me home and we're in the car and he's like, okay, like I really need to talk to you about something. And I was like, sure, like go ahead, like bracing myself for him to tell me about this girl. Instead, what comes out of his mouth is, I really, really like you and I really want you to be like my girlfriend, but I'm going to college and I don't know where this is gonna go and I don't know like what to do at the end of the summer when I'm about to leave for school. Wait, what? Like I, like I literally did not think that this was gonna go beyond the end of the school year. Like I thought he was gonna graduate and we were gonna split and that was gonna be it. And I just was so confused in that moment like looking at him and he was getting emotional. He was tearing up legit getting emotional about this and he was like I don't want you to think that like you don't matter like I really like you and I want to keep this going but I just don't know how to do it and I was like whoa like okay dude like let's do prom and then we'll go from there and I was like I really like you too but I didn't expect this to go you know into your college time like I just thought that this was like a little thing on the side, kind of. Okay, like, good, like, I'm glad we were kind of on the same page. I really do like you, like, I don't want to break up or anything. So after this conversation, in my mind, I'm like, okay, so maybe this is more serious than I'm thinking it is, so maybe I should bring up this girl. So I'm like, hey, you know, like, I gotta ask you something. Who is Sabrina? And I say her first and last name, just like on the phone, and the reaction was very, like, 
low key. He just was kind of like, oh, that's a girl that I know from blah, blah, blah. She's graduated. She's a friend of mine and she's going through a hard time. Like she just went through a breakup and she just wanted someone to talk to. Wait, how did you know like who she was? And I said, oh, like she texted you at practice. Oh yeah, like she's just a friend. Like very nonchalant, very like, like he didn't care anything about this person. Like just super whatever. And I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm like, I was scared to ask you. And he was like, oh my God, like, don't ever be afraid to ask me about anything. You're with me. Like, I don't feel like you need to, like, be quiet about stuff, like, speak up. Giving me so much confidence, guys. Like, giving me all the confidence in the world that I could just say and do whatever. And it wasn't going to change things. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. That same night, he was like, we're also going to get my text this week. Do you want to come with me? And I was like, yeah, like, absolutely. I'll go with you to get your tux and we'll pick out colors and everything will be great. So that following week, we go to get his tux with his mom. Um, he brings me with him because he was like, I want your expertise on like what looks good. And I was like, sounds great, you know? So we get to the tux shop and I was wearing a black dress to prom. And so we kind of had free reign to pick out a color for like a vest and tie. Um, and then like I wanted to do like a colored ribbon on my corsage and his boutonniere. And I picked the color teal because at the time I had an obsession with teal and black together, apparently. So we show up to the tuck shop and I was like, hey, like I think teal would look really nice. Like we should look at the teal vests and maybe pick something out from there. And he was like, Actually, I have another idea. I have this friend who wore black to her prom, and I think that we should do what her date did. Okay, like, I don't know why he brought me if he already had in his mind that he was gonna do what this friend did. So he, like, whips out his phone, and he already has, like, a photo on his phone of her at her prom with her date. And it's this girl that I've never seen before, dark hair. And her date is standing there and he's wearing a silver vest and tie. He was like, yeah, I'm thinking we do silver. I think that would look really, really good. And I'm like, why did he ask me to give my input if he already had it picked out? And I was like, yeah, like silver's cool. And I was like, maybe we can just do teal ribboning on the um, flowers. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so that we each get what we want. It's his prom. I'm not gonna argue with him, whatever, moving on from that. But it was just so weird that like this girl played such a huge part in what he chose. And I didn't ask him anything further. I was just like, okay, whatever, like moving on, okay. But that was just super weird, you know, super weird, right? Prom comes, we get ready to go to prom. Everything goes pretty smoothly. Like we go get our pictures done. Actually, if you have not seen my reacting to my prom looks video, I'll link it down below. And in that video, the first kind of set of pictures you see, that is actually this prom that I'm referring to and us, and you'll see him in his silver vest. Um, we go, everything is great. I thought we looked really good together. I'm just like over the moon excited. We go to prom and when we walk in, who is running the ticket counter? My ex. So my ex, he was a junior at the time and he was running the prom. Uh, that was like something that the junior class had to do was run homecoming and prom. And so he was taking tickets and sees me and is immediately freaking out. Like he was like, wow, like you look really good. And then starts to text me being like, don't go home with Jeff. Like I'm afraid that Jeff is going to try and take advantage of you. And our plan for after prom was actually to go to like this tent out thing. And Jeff and I were supposed to stay in our own tent. So, which he insisted upon, I should say, I should note that. Insisted upon us being in our own tent. So. Um, my ex was freaking out. Like, he still cared about me. I knew he did. And he was just like, don't do anything with Jeff. Like, you're gonna, like, get hurt, whatever. Like, he was like, you know, Jeff's gonna leave you, all this stuff. And I'm like, shut up. Like, leave me alone. Like, we're at prom. Like, just leave me alone. Like, you've ignored me for months. Like, don't talk to me. So I go on and continue to, like, dance with Jeff and hang out with Jeff. And everything is good. Um, until Jeff disappears. Jeff just up and disappears from prom. He was like, hang on, I'll be right back. And then disappears for an hour. And to this day, I don't know where he went. We spent 
a very long time looking for him. We were checking bathrooms. I was sending people to look for him outside. We literally had no idea where he was. There were definitely people at the prom that did know where he was and didn't want to tell me, but no clue. Um, to this day, my guess is that he was out like drinking in the parking lot, maybe hooking up with someone in the parking lot. Who knows, but anyway, Jeff did disappear from the prom for like an hour. So while he had disappeared, my ex like swoops in and is like, do you want to dance? And so we're dancing and I'm hanging out with another girl who was a senior and we're just like all hanging out and wondering where the hell Jeff is. Jeff reappears eventually with like very minimal time left in the prom and he was like, I want to leave. So he takes me with him, my ex is like still continuing to freak out. He was very straight laced like me, so he was worried. Like Je everybody was kind of worried. Jeff was very much a playboy, very much had a reputation, like I've said. So everybody was like, <laughs> like Kaylee's such a goody two shoes, like good girl, like this is not gonna go well. And I'm just like, bye. Like <laughs> getting in the car with him like see ya. So we leave and our tent out plans got messed up We ended up at one of the boys the lacrosse boys houses with his parents and basically our whole prom night that Jeff was looking forward to got sabotaged Thank God. My ex was essentially texting me all night long, freaking out, like, please don't do anything. I still have feelings for you. I want a relationship with you, blah, 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 blah. And so I did not do anything with Jeff that night. Like, if you're wondering, like, no, I held true to my word and I did not, I did not do anything with Jeff that I was going to regret. And the next morning, I'm essentially thinking that he's gonna drop me off and we're never gonna see each other again and he's just gonna like leave me. Even though like I'm managing lacrosse and I would see him every day still, I'm like, he's going to dump me like today. Like I know he is. I just kind of like stayed really quiet, didn't say anything, I was waiting for it. He drops me off and he's like, hey, my family is having a dinner like this coming week. Do you wanna come with me? Sure, like just very strange, like continues to want to hang out, keeps hanging out with me, takes me to dinner with literally 30 of his family members, his grandmother from Florida who was up visiting, introduced me to everybody as his girlfriend. Sorry, I feel like I'm rushing, but this is a very long story, so I don't want to like bore you guys too much more here. We're going to get into where I find out everything that was going on. So probably like a week or two before lacrosse season was kind of ending, Jeff started to have um, pain in one of his hips and was having to go to the trainer like pretty much every other day to stretch his hip before practice and stuff. Um, and we started having later practices, so I would go home, he would go to the trainer, and then he would come and pick me up and we would go to practice. Not thinking anything of it, he was going to the trainer, you know, pretty much every day of the week, like every other day at least. And just spending like a little bit less time with me here and there, but like it really wasn't that different from before prom. I was just kind of like rolling with it at this point. Like I was like, whatever happens, happens. Like I'm not that attached to this whole thing. Um, he did tell me he loved me at one point to kind of like convince me to sleep with him, you know, cause that was still a goal after prom. <laughs> Like he didn't succeed at prom, so he was still trying to do that. And he actually told me he loved me at one point. Just trying to think of all the things that he did and said, you know, like just, you know, introduce me to the family. There was just a lot of stuff. He would have moments where he would seem fine. And then there was definitely moments where he didn't seem into me at all. So I knew something was up. Um, and then one day after practice, he kind of drove me home. He was very quiet. He dropped me off. This was literally one of the last practices of the year. And once I got in my house, he like drove away and then he texted me and was like, Hey, I just think maybe it might be time to wrap this whole thing up. I really like you, but like I said, I'm going to college and I think I just want to be single this summer. Okay, like I was expecting this. Like this is what I had been expecting like right after prom. So it was like now mid-May, like it had been another, or when was prom? So like it was probably like two or three weeks after prom. Like we were going into June at this point and he was gonna be graduating. And so I was like, okay, like I get it. So we break up, I'm like cool with it. My ex starts to immediately text me again and I'm like, huh, weird full circle. Like he's coming back to me that, you know, after I've pined over him for months and I was kind of over him, um, he starts to come back and we start to like kind of talk again. and. 
you know, everything is kind of falling back into place and cool. And then, 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 we're done with the notes. Like from here on out, I know the story really well. So, it was right before a game, I think. Um, they had had like a practice here and there. Uh, it was either right before a game or right before practice. I had started getting a ride with one of the other players. So we show up and <laughs> Jackie and I get out of the car and there is a fight happening in the parking lot between two of the senior guys, one being Jeff and one being a different guy. And then the other two captains were trying to pull them apart and they're all yelling and just being like friggin' ridiculous. And Jeff storms away. And I can hear them all yelling at him like, we can't even believe you. Like, how could you even do this? Now, at this point, Jackie and I have gained quite a bit of respect from the lacrosse team. And they see me coming and they were like, don't come over here. Like, don't even come over here. Like, you don't even want to know what's going on. And of course I want to know what's going on. Like, hello. Like, clearly this is some good drama. So one of the other captains pulls me aside and he was like, did you know anything going on with Jeff this whole time that you guys have been together and like went to prom and stuff. And I was like, no. <laughs> so basically what had happened was that Jeff had been cheating on me the entire time we were together. Probably from like before, like I don't even know, I don't know how long it was going on, but I think it was a decently long amount of time. I think it was probably most of the relationship that we had had. Jeff had been cheating on me with the student athletic trainer. Guess what her name was? <laughs> it was Sabrina. <laughs> Oh, uh, so all the times that he'd been going to the trainer, he was going to see Sabrina. I don't know, like, if stuff was going on at the trainer, like, at school, or if he was just going there to see her, but she basically was, like, a 24-year-old athletic trainer student, like, that was in college, and the kicker was that she was engaged to a pro wrestler. <laughs> And he now wanted to beat Jeff up because he had found out what was going on between Jeff and Sabrina. I, meanwhile, had zero idea this was going on. And better, the rest of the lacrosse team didn't know what was going on. Like, literally nobody. Because these people, like, were f trying to fight him in the um, parking lot for doing this. Like, they just could not believe it. And... Um, all of the captains and like all of the players basically were just like, we're so sorry. Like we had no clue this was going on. We didn't know he was doing this. Like we would have told you if we had known. Everybody was in complete disbelief. The coach found out. <laughs> what ended up happening was she actually broke off her engagement with her fiance to be with Jeff. And they were together for most of the summer, as far as I know, because I had him on Facebook and like they would post pictures and stuff and she'd be like, my honey and like gross stuff like that. And all I could think about was like, you were engaged to be married to somebody, but you decided to date an 18 year old boy who had never even like, I mean, like he, he wasn't even in college yet. Like he was in high school. There has to be something like super wrong about that. whole. I mean, like they're both adults. But like, she was an employee of the school. Like that, that probably was not, probably was not legal or good or anything. But like she risked her job. She risked her marriage. Like she got rid of her marriage altogether for Jeff. Meanwhile, I'm like completely oblivious. And like, I look back on that now and I'm like, thank God I didn't sleep with Jeff. I look back on that now and I'm like, wow. Like everybody that was warning me about him was so right. And I just can't even believe <laughs> that I didn't know what was going on but apparently nobody else did so I don't feel like terrible that I didn't know because like he hid it very very well so afterward I obviously knew about it he knew I knew about it um and then the following year I was the manager again my junior year and um he actually came to film one day uh that's like when they sit down and watch like their footage or whatever from the previous game 
Um, he came to film at the very beginning of the season and um, just wanted to talk to like the players and stuff and the new captains. Everybody was kind of just like, ooh, like, are you guys going to talk to each other? Like, what's going on? Uh. And it was awkward, but after the fact, um, I sent him like a message and I was just like, yo, like, I'm over it. He honestly ended up in the bad spot. Like, he broke up with a couple that was engaged and he ruined a marriage and then they didn't end up together. I mean, he was really, really in the bad spot, not me. I saw him a few years back to talk to and like, I don't really know what he's doing now, but we're still like friends. We have each other on social media and stuff um, and it's cool, like I'm over it, but it's absolutely hilarious and like just a very ridiculous story that I just had to tell you guys. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up Click the subscribe button if you want to see more from me. Click the little bell if you want to know when I upload to YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.